people at the stake. It takes it takes a lot. It takes a prayer. Thank God for them. We're, we're striving to do it here on the east side. The east side is considered a black community of Knoxville, and but we are striving to reach different ethnic groups. And so the conference is to bring awareness of the neglected need, emphasizing on evangelizing independent fundamental Baptist churches that is needed in the black community. Now let me say this. So let me hear you say so. Friend, let's pray, pray. This church is going to go so I remember we used to go to pastor school. We used to have people come from non-denomination, Methodist, Presbyterian. They get right with God. They go back and say, I'm going to go soul in. I want you to pray to get some black preachers, Amen. some white preachers. Amen. They ain't doing no soul in. Right. What good is it to have a soul in the conference if it's not soul in? Right. Amen. 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 And so, one thing we know, these speakers here are going to be talking about some soul in. <laughs> and, and not no skin with them. <laughs> so, so uh, I want you to, now on the serious side, there are white preachers that really want to reach black families. But we just got to ask God to give them, God give them wisdom. How to win? I want to win, we want to win more white families. God give us wisdom. We want to win Spanish. God give us wisdom. That's all. We're not condemning anybody. We're not, we're not like that. We're not like the Biden administration. <laughs> call, call everybody a racist. <laughs> if they're black or white. <laughs> well, it seems like they call everybody a racist. Everybody's not a racist. But we're not, we're not going that far. We don't, we don't go to critical race theory, friend. We're not trying to make this country communist, socialist. We're using diversity in the right way. Now, this is the sad thing. When you, miss, when you mention diversity, some of these white preachers, you're scared. That's sad. There's a way to use diversity right now. And then the black preachers, some of them get scared. Don't get scared. We can use it in a good way. Oh, you say, Pastor, what do you mean by being scared? Well, see, they're using it the wrong way up there in D.C., up, uh, up, there, uh, up there in the White House, and they're using diversity in the wrong way. For example, they're hiring somebody maybe because they're a lesbian, yep. 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 or maybe because they're just black mm -hmm. or white. We, we, Martin Luther King said the content of the character, not the color of the skin. Right. Amen. Amen. Just don't discriminate. Amen. 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 Now, come on, you're going to tell me some of these white preachers in the conference they can't find no black person at all? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're going to tell me these black guys. You're going to tell me they can't get one guest speaker this, this white. Friends, we need to be balanced. We're not going to have somebody come in this conference just because they're white. But there are some white guys that can be qualified. There are a lot of black guys qualified. They were God's men. Amen. 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 And there's some Spanish-speaking people. So what I'm trying to say, we're going to use diversity in the right way. Do you know Jesus taught diversity in the Great Commission? Let me hear you say, all nations. Hello. Hello. So I want you to bite your friends. I want you to bite your relatives. Okay? I want you invited. And I want your courage to come. Family, friends. Amen. And I want you to pray. Let me say pray. Before the service, you know what you usually do. Pick, at least pick one day to fast. You can fast more. But at least one day and pray, right? And then what do we do before the, uh, the, the Bible conference? We, um, we ask that, you know, that uh, we, look, on your own schedule. Pick a night. Just pray all through the night. As long as you can. <laughs> Go as long as you can. You doze off, just get back up. <laughs> you know, but, you know and, and when we have the conference, God blesses. He's blessed at every conference in such a way when people visit. And so really pray. And these upcoming weeks, now I want you to pray for the brothers that are going on vacation. Uh, then this, uh, well, it's hard to believe, Friday. Pray for your safety, you know. Hope you'll be refreshed. Amen. You see? And while they're gone, there will be work, work being done in preparation of the conference. When they get back, they'll get right into it. And they'll be, they'll be flooring it for Jesus. And rolling up their sleeves. And getting with it. They'll be all, you know, courage. Want to show God, you know. You want, you, want, you want to do great things for them. Amen? 
and thank God so much. On the bulletin, um, we do have a few bulletins left. Yeah, um, uh, yes, we have some bulletins left. Let's get them out to those that don't have theirs from Sunday because there's a list of things here on the bulletin that I want you to um, be praying about. Let me hear you say Mother's Day Sunday. Mother, you're so special. And what a special job you have. We want to show appreciation. And Mother's Day is a special day, okay? Sunday school teachers, God bless you. Encourage the mothers to come. And um, uh, I want to say, Mother, thank you for your sacrifice. You will be honored. You will be honored. I look forward to Mother's Day. I love Mother's Day around our church, friend. I love Mother's Day. God bless these mothers. And so pray that God will help us be encouragement to these mothers Sunday. And, uh, you know, I strive to encourage the mothers. And when I give the mothers, other people can be blessed by the things they listen to. You know? I, I, now, the Burleys will be on vacation. But once again, I thank God for Brother Burley. And I want to say publicly, Sister Patrice, and say in front of everybody, thank you for that wonderful testimony of being in church and visiting a good church. Oh, not just going uh, down the corner Catholic Church. Not just going down to the, to the, to the, to, to the um, liberal Methodist Church that has, has some LGBT um, homo <laughs> leading the choir. <laughs> Thank God you won't go. You will not go. You will not go. You will not go. You will hunt for an independent from the Baptist, Baptist Church. And you ask the pastor, Pastor, what church? Do you, you, you know some good churches here, Pastor? We're going to be in church. We're, we're going on vacation. But Sunday morning, we're going to be in church. Amen. It takes a lot of effort, for it. it does. But thank God you do it for God. Amen. 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 For sake, not this Sunday. Then, and then, of, of course, during uh, the time they're there. But we'll be here with God's grace, uh, sir, uh, getting busy for the Lord. Now, serving the Lord. Uh, 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 the got the graduations that are listed here. Talk more. Um, to, uh, it's on the bulletin here. And talk a little more about her about that and Brother Grant and Sister Nathalene. And we thank the Lord and praise God for this wonderful event um, that she'll be graduating. That's right. Thank God. Thank God for you. Amen. It takes a while. Congratulations on planning the graduation. Let's give her a hand. Cheer her on. Amen. Thank God. So, let's keep on fighting, sister. Fight, fight, fight. I know the devil won't like it, but you stay prayed up and you, in that word of God, you, you do fine following Jesus, okay? All right. May God bless your future as you follow him. Now, a little Lillian graduation in the kindergarten uh, um, here, uh, listed the May 23rd, Pastor Liddell's camp meeting, May 23rd to 25th, and be praying about that. As you know, the South Carolina camp meeting, Pastor Tony Finney, May the 13th through the 15th. I want you to look at that. And that is hard to believe, but next Monday, next Tuesday. And so I plan to go to that conference. I want you to pray for me. I meet different pastors. There might be 50 to the 100 pastors. You never know. I preach these conferences. They're not to call you from the floor. You, never, you don't know sometimes. You know? But I want to go encourage the preachers. I want to encourage them. And um, there's about a million black people in that state and, uh, and uh, sad you know it's, we they, they won't come the, the black families won't come to the meetings and black preachers well your pastor's going I'm gonna come encourage you I don't want to segregate myself you know I don't want to segregate he that shows himself friend he that shows have friends must show himself friendly amen and uh, also Martin Luther King made a difference. I want other black families to take advantage of the good preaching and the good teaching that will be there. I want them to have the, some of this teaching. I want to stir some of these preachers up to keep trying, keep fighting. I'm striving to reach white families here in the, and we're in the black community on the east side. You see? Work at this thing. We go, we go get them, we bring them in and we strive to do what we need to do more. Amen? And so I want to meet these preachers, encourage them, and let them know I love them. Let them know I have a burden for the black population. That, that they can get some black families that keep at it. Don't give up. You can have one if you really want one. <laughs> and if they 
plug me up to preach, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to share the burden. I've done it in the past, and it touched your hearts, a number of them. Okay? Be praying about that. Martin Luther King made a difference. What if he just stayed home, stayed away? Um, I will encourage some of these black brothers. They're gathering together. They're segregating themselves. You know, if they're, they're honest, they ain't got one white family. Encourage them. I plan to go there. I plan to encourage them all. Amen. Encourage them all. Let them know they can do it. We're not going to segregate ourselves. We're going to try to help them. Try to love them. And that's why we're having our real conference. Because it's right. We need it. But I thank God for the praying people. Isn't that right? Now the flyers, you passed out the flyers. Um, did you get the flyers? Get the flyers to these that came in. Some of them, they get the new flyer. And we grow as we go. Okay? Get the flyers to them. And the picture about right over here. Right over here. Make sure every one of these got them. Thank you. Over here. Make sure they got them. And, uh, and got the uh, picture of the speakers. And I want you to be praying for them every day. I'm asking us to pray for them every day. Did you get your flyer? I hope you will get you the flyer. We grow as we go. We're still, we, we got some, another printer. We got the printer still working on it. Thank God for the Brussels Truths when they get back and be working more on a, a, a flyer. Different people want, uh, Joy worked on one and different ones. Uh, if you want to make one, wonderful, great. Maybe you can design one. Uh, we, yes! He said, the more the better. And I want you to get them out. And I want you to pray. Hang it there on your refrigerator somewhere. Hang it somewhere where you can see it. Put it on the refrigerator. Put it somewhere that you can see it. Keep them in your car. I'll give you, a, I'll give you some tape. And everybody invite people. You just watch how God blessed the conference. Thank you for prayer. I have to covet your prayers. I thank God for you. For God, folks that watch online, God bless you. You pray. They're praying. And, and I'm just excited about what God is going to do. I got I already got a phone call. They're coming in from out of town. They're coming in. And thank God for the workers. You're beautifying the place. You're cleaning. And uh, it's companies coming. My, you dear sisters know how it is. God bless you. We just want to just do it for God. Decorating and cleaning all. And this looks so wonderful. And God bless us. And, Got good news. The windows are ordered. All windows, every window, every window. It, it, a, they're making them. They're making them. Well, it'd be a blessing if they could get them before. They take weeks to make, but it'd be a blessing before the conference. Yeah. It'd be a blessing if they, if they come in before the conference. Y'all pray. There'll be some speedy McDeedies there. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, uh, th thank the Lord so much for what you do, and thank the Lord so much, you know. And, and you know, as you can see, on the bu the buckets are coming, where the buckets are in progress. Look at look, look at that there in your bulletin there, on the buckets. I love my church Sunday. Let me say, I love my church Sunday. So that's that in the bulletin, and I want you to be praying about that. That's July the seventh. So we got time. Every ministry raising $1,000 to help with these windows. And our Nehemiah project, the things that we've gotten done. We've got a lot done. Oh, thank God we got a lot done. And we want to get things paid. I know. And so the van ministry is included. We're going to get some more repairs there. We're going to get a mirror on one of those vans there repairs. And um, uh, so um, we want to get that fixed and also look like, I don't know, we're going, to, we're going to try to start that again. We might have to get a battery for the other one. But it's, it's still that red one, so be praying about that um, situation. It's, it's dead again. So, um, but we, 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 we get we, we get we get these things rolling and get rolling, and we want to get the air condition fixing that white one, <laughs> so we can get some cool air in that air in that white one, okay? And uh, so there's things that's needed, and uh, so give to the bus ministry near my project. Give to these things, and windows, and and all that we've gotten done, the work. Uh, it's worth it for God's glory. It's worth it. Let me say Nehemiah Project. Just put it on the envelope after your time. We know what you're talking about. And you look at your envelope, you write it down there. When we got put in the building fund, we know what you're talking about. We know what you've done. You're in the bus ministry, we know what you're talking about. You're helping the Nehemiah Project. When you put on the envelope windows, we know what you're talking about. All right? Let's everybody stand, please, if we will. And so these are the things that are coming upon us quickly and swiftly. We also, in May, we do have the um, House Institute Group, the pep rally on that Friday at 7.30. I want you to be praying for that pep rally there. 
and we'll get a flyer for that too. And Brother Bush and Trisha did a wonderful job with the others that make flyers for that Friday, and we'll have a nice flyer and, and promoting that and get invite invite some churches and pastors and, and people and, and people in our church to come to this pep rally before our, our rare Bible conference. Amen. That's exciting, isn't it? Sight in the air, isn't it, friend? And our conference, June the 9th through the 12th, rare soul winner conference. And right after that, and these things are coming upon us at Youth Congress and Temple Baptist Church of Power, the Youth Rally, July 1st and 5th. And the Sword of the Lord Bible Conference is coming on July 22nd. Now, those dates, remember, July 22nd to the 23rd. That's the Sword of the Lord. On Monday, Tuesday, we're going to call it a family church trip. It's on the board there of the conference and the speakers. They're having a youth conference during the same time. So we plan to bring our young people. That's wonderful. We'll have some chaperones with us and take a trip and have a great time and go out to eat and just have fun and just have an exciting time of fellowship and be praying about that. Be praying that God would bless the conference. You know, Pat, Brother Shelton Smith preached at our rare conference. You know, and, and I thank God. I talked with him. And uh, he, he put my sermon right on the front page of that paper. Amen. And uh, it had a history of race problems, history. And years ago, uh, the, the uh, leader of, of the paper, John Rice, um, um, you know, taught segregation. And um, he made some mistakes. And uh, but Shelton Smith realized that was a mistake. And thank God, uh, during those times, and um, uh, we, we had him preach. And he put, put my sermon right there in the paper. And, um, and I share with them the importance of we, we've, got, we've got to go forward with this matter. Amen. Amen. And, um, and uh, he's got um, Brother uh, Titus. I know Brother Titus is a black preacher that be preaching there. And uh, I know, and, um, and, I, and I thank God so much uh, that we're starting to see a difference. Friend, we've got to get the gospel, good churches, independent, from the Baptist, solar churches in the black community. Amen. Not just a black thing, but reaching all people. Amen. And Shel Smith wants to make a difference. He's, he's making an effort at it. And some black preachers segregate themselves. They don't come to the meeting. I'm coming. We're going to bring our people. We're going to bring some color in that place. <laughs> we did it last year. Amen. <laughs> That's right. And they want it. There's, there's a number of them want it. But really, there's white preachers that really want to reach black people. Some black people are just as prejudiced as white people. I'm telling you. I, Fred, I'm telling you. They're, 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 they're just as prejudiced. In Spanish, same thing. So Spanish got prejudiced. But we're, we're striving to be examples. As we come, God bless our Spanish-speaking precious ones. That's right. Amen. Guatemala, wherever you may be. You come. Amen. You come. We brought you to the meetings. We brought, we have black and white and Spanish. We come in here. Brighten it up. Brighten the corner where you're at. Amen. 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 Jesus in all nations. Amen. But on the serious side, we have encouragement to them. And I've been encouraged. And, uh, and I thank the Lord so much for you. Pray for the Sword and the Lord Bible Conference. Okay? And y'all be praying about going and about going. Maybe if you can't go both days, Monday, Tuesday, we plan to come back Wednesday. Maybe if we go one day, it's in North Carolina, about four hours away. About four hours. You know, can we either stay overnight, some of us stay in the motel, you know, a Monday, Tuesday night, come back Wednesday. But be praying about this matter, okay? Asking God to bless the meeting. Help us to be an example. I, this is encouraging. I met people that would never knew about me that never knew about our ministry. And I'll never forget one year I went, the preacher, he just, he just loved me. He sat down with me. He's an older man. And they're so disappointed of the racial problems they had in the past. He's so disturbed about it. He loved your preacher. I sat down with him and talked with him. He was so glad I was there. So thank you, friend. Thank you. Yes, sir. Amen. I took a really number of these meetings. He can come and plan to go more. Out of God's grace. Okay. And then you got uh, Tim's wedding here in the bulletin to pray for him uh, there in August the 10th. So these are the things I want you to be praying for these upcoming meetings. And also birthdays. Oh, look like we got a surprise here. Um, birthdays I added. Look like, let's see what we got here. Um, this one, Sister Sharon, the birthday uh, was uh, this week, and um, oh, Brother Stephen Wade, all right, so Brother Grant, get this to Brother Stephen, well, give the sister, um, uh, his mom, uh, let, him, let him know, uh, and then Sister um, Sharon, happy birthday, let's sing happy birthday, 
Happy birthday to you. Sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> Amen. Oh, God bless you. There's an envelope right in front of you, right in the back of you. Thank God for every giver. And if you need to go by the table there, swipe your card. Brother Bill will be over there in a little while, a few moments. Give him a few minutes. He'll be over there to help you. Swipe your card if you're going to give that way. Or if you're going to give online, you can give online um, right there on the website there. Thank you, Brother Burley. He'll come and pray over the pray over the God bless you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the Lord and pray for Will and ask the Lord blessing on the offering and giving at this time. Father, we thank you, Lord, for just blessing us to be here tonight in our midweek service. And thank you for hearing the wonderful news about the windows, dear Lord. And we just thank you, Father, what you're doing. And, and our conference coming up, Lord, we just help us keep praying every day about that, Jesus, that you bless us and that you just help us, dear Lord, to have a wonderful, wonderful meeting. And bless the Lord, this, uh, the, the up, upcoming conferences, this Word of the Lord conference. And just bless all these different types of meetings. Thank you for what you're doing here at Grace Bible Baptist Church. I pray you provide our every need, Lord, and bless the name of my, my, my project, dear God, and bless the bucket offering, dear God. Pray you provide, bless, dear God, and we promise to thank you and praise you for what you are going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing that with you. Okay, what page is that? What page is that you're singing on? 86? 86. Let's put some words to that wonderful, beautiful music. Okay, that flute. You do a wonderful job on that flute. She'll give us an intro, okay? Well, she'll give us an intro. All right. You can stand. You can stand. Okay? Well, no, sit. Go ahead and sit down. Yeah, some of you look like you're comfortable. Go ahead and sit down. Go, go, go. Go ahead and sit down. You look like you're comfortable. Go ahead. Go ahead and give us an intro there. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold. Wonderful words, isn't that right? Wonderful words. All right, we have Sister Patrice Burley sing a solo and uh, minister to us and pray that God will speak to you. I want to say thank you that prayed this um, last Sunday, the great revival, one day revival. God met with us and the word of God was preached and may we never forget how God spoke to us. Amen. And when you see somebody coming in back on a Wednesday evening that makes a special effort, Sister Tanya takes a, 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 give her a hand when you see her coming on a Wednesday evening. Amen. That's, a, that's God working. <laughs> that's God working, okay? And when you see her coming on a when you see her coming on a Wednesday evening, that's a lot of effort. That's a lot of effort. We and we say thank you because it takes a lot. And uh, you encourage people on when you see them coming on a Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Amen. We pray for you, Sister Tanya. We're glad you're here tonight. God bless you. The Holy Spirit's working, friend. He's working. Pray for Brother Jamie. Amen. Pray for, pray, pray for his um, precious wife. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, Sister Teresa Pearl. God bless you.
pray for, ask the Lord. I know the rapture didn't happen, Sister Patrice, we're still here. <laughs> she said she thought we were, I was praying. <laughs> God, God bless you, Sister. <laughs> <laughs> My father has a great big family And there are many children besides me If you're wondering how he divides his time Just let me say I never stand in line. He loves me like I was his only child. Never felt such love before. I can never ask for more. He loves me like I was his only child. God really loves me. Yes, he really loves me. He loves me like I was his only child. He never favors me above the rest. But I can say that I am truly blessed. He treats me best as I often say. But then all my father's children feel that way. He loves me like I was his only child. Never felt such love before. I can never ask for more. He loves me like I was his only child. Yes, he really loves me. He loves me like I was his only child. God bless you. We're picking up in the Psalm 49. Thank you for ministering to us and singing. Everyone that ministers to us, Congress is singing instruments. And thank God for every one of you that are just here as encouragement to your pastor, your preacher, that you do God right. Thank you so much. I will be a blessing to you. Psalms 49, the songs, they singing. Um, we had the one day revival Sunday. Everyone that was here, if I ask you, I believe you can tell me, you that were listening, certain statements that were made by our evangelists that came through, that God brought through. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit's bringing to my mind right now, other things will be going through your mind, is um, what, singing, singing, you're, you're singing, let's sing about God, spiritual songs and hymns, and, did you catch it? You're singing, you're sing, you're singing some song, you're, you're singing, it, it may be a worldly song, it might be a worldly song, it might be a worldly song, you see, it might be, it might be something, you know, it might be something of, you know, that the devil's using, it causes depression, it causes heartache, it causes hurt, and they're singing these songs, and you, the, the young people, I'm telling you, um, trace the music, the, the, the family problems, the trouble, um, the arguing, the fussing, the not getting along. What are they singing? What kind of songs are they singing in the car? What are they singing in their home? They, the, devil, the devil used to be, Satan was over all the music. Satan was over all the instruments. He was cast down. In 2 Corinthians 11, you would think, look at that angel. Look at that music, what they're saying about God. An angel. deceiving they've been deceived because they're singing about God they're singing about Jesus do you remember that person that followed the apostle Paul and said these are the servants of the most high God or whatever 
that it sounds like some preachers. We gotta find out what they believe. We gotta find out the tune. We gotta find out the tune. So be careful with this gospel that they call gospel. Because their beat is wrong. And God won't have to borrow from the devil's beat. We got some in this room, and you young people, thank God, you've never been to the clubs, you've never been out there. We got some, thank God, raised up in a Christian home or whatever, and uh, thank God for that. No need to go back out there and look for that stuff. You say, why you mention that? Because these were songs. They taught something. You see, they taught something. You see? They taught you a great truth. They taught me, and it teaches me. Tonight, I'm going to learn from this song. You know, some of the gospel, we understand that's rough. But you know, it even gets worse. With some of these, um, one guy, he went across the street and said he murdered, I forgot how many, how many did he kill in that family? But all day long, he was listening to a song about killing people. Killing people. Some have killed their own parents. They started drinking and listening to it over and over again. What about the wives? Some start beating on their wives. Left their wives. Left their husband. Because some songs said, do it. Do it. You ain't got to put up with it. Do it. They taught them to do evil. But these songs, Arch and Wonder, they said, oh, by the way, the congregational hymns, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Fresh, that's what we sang. Um, you opened up the comforters. We sang these songs. The, the Holy Ghost, the comforters come. You come to church, down at the cross, near the cross, at Calvary. Amen? Glo uh, just over the glory land, we're marching to Zion, leading on the everlasting arms. Trust and obey. There's no other way. See, God's speaking to you. And this is a song like that, okay? And I think we forget when we read this, these are the words of the song. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Amen? It, you know, it, it, you know, say, Pastor, is, would it be a nice thing if I just made up a tune? Or, as long as it's Christian and godly and make up your own melody. With, you, you speak. That's right. And I remember our evangelist, he made a little chuckle. He said, you probably remember that. He said, he, he got the greatest voice. <laughs> but he, he gets you low on the stage. <laughs> you caught that, right? What, what wonderful words. And we... So we'll pick up here, we'll pick up here where we left off um, last week. And uh, I want you to think about this, they, verse 6, they trust in their wealth and boast themselves, verse 6, Psalms 49, verse 6. The song, this, this wonderful song, this is the words to the song. They, they, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of the riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God. A ransom for him. What, what does he say? What does he say? We think about our evangelists that walked away from the NBA. They said he's stupid. They said he's crazy. Something's wrong with him. Look at him, mission uh, evangelists going to churches. And, and by the way, thank God for this church. We love them. Put in a nice motel. Four days. Four days. Let's spend some time in Sevierville with his, with his precious wife. Amen. Uh, beautiful restaurants. Um, Gave him a love offering, you see, and, and loved him, and, and he loved us. But, but he's worthy. He's worthy because he loves the Lord, and, and he walked away for millions of dollars, and he gets nowhere near that. But I'll tell you what he gets. You see his precious wife. He'll have a precious family. Got to take care of his needs. I guarantee you, got to meet everything he needs, and I guarantee you, got to give him peace and joy. I, I watch this. He, now, I know. Please, please. I, I don't like doing this. I got people I love. You got people that you love. Okay? I'm not kicking them down. But just hear me out. Hey, look at these girls. Do you want them to go through split custody of kids? Come on. Don't get mad at me. You really want them to have to surrender their kid to some who knows what? Whore, mother, whore. Who 
knows what they're going to say to your kid. It's out of your power. At that time, it's none of your business to them. He's got a new girl, a different woman, not his or her mother. Now listen to me. I love them. I, I, I've got people that you got people you love. I got people in our church. But what about these teenagers? Amen. What about these kids in children's church? Amen. 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 I, I believe the attitude should be to the ones that made a mistake that have got to pay child support. To say, hey, Pastor, thank you, you love me, try to warn me. And I love them, I don't want them to go through this. I don't want my sister to go through this. I don't want my brother. I mean, if you really love him like you should, you say, listen to mom and dad. On that fraternity court sticking shelf, trying to find out who's, who's the daddy. You're going to find that all the money is all the money and all the houses and all the cars. Come on. And you're going to find out that life is going to be more than a house and a car and money. You, you heard Brother Jamie, our evangelist, talk about Sunday, about prayer, about being able to get to God when you really need him. That child would have died. That child would have died. And I want you to be able to get to God. I want you to know that God only can save your brothers and sisters and moms and dads and children. God is the only one that can save people out of hell. Some people, oh, I'll be honest with you, money's their God. Money's their God. I love them. You love them, but it's their God. Their job is their God. Thank God we got hard working people in this room. And one thing I can say, you take time out for God. You take time out in church. You take time out serving God. You got you take it's your tithes and your offerings. God bless you. They ain't trusting the wealth, verse 6, and boast themselves and multitude of the riches. I feel sorry what's going on in our country right now. Some of you don't know what's going on. And, you know, I, I, I understand everybody has a right to be the way they want to be. And, you know, just, just don't throw rocks at us that watch the news that want to try to keep you informed of what's going on. Don't, don't throw rocks on us. We're trying to help you. Some of you don't know what's going on. But it's the wealthy and the rich people that's behind all this supporting these politicians of killing these babies. And they're helping these liberal politicians. They're helping them, the drag queens, the transgender. Some of you are wondering how can this happen when the doctor would do surgery on these boys and girls and their secret parts and change them. And they said they're committing suicide because they don't like the way they've been changed. So sad, isn't it? How did we get here? The wealthy people help these judges and politicians. The rich to pass these laws that you see promoting communism, socialism. And they're striving to win more elections. The liberals, the socialists, the communists. Some of you don't understand this. I'm trying to help you. Some of you don't even know what's going on. They're, they're on the campuses. They're, they're, we call it rioting. Breaking down doors. Breaking down rooms. Putting barriers up. Telling the Jews they can't come to the classroom. We don't want you here. And then, the persecuting the Jewish people are getting away with it. Why? What, how is it? Wealthy, rich people. And what I want you to pray is that God be merciful to our country. Don't, don't let these wealthy haters of America, haters of America, 
destroy our country. They're using Black Lives Matter to deceive black people and trick black people and deceive black people. So many have been deceived. And the very ones that are funding it, the very ones that are promoting this, have prejudice problems. And that's why we see so many black people killing each other in the community, black communities, black on black killing each other. Because it's funded by these people. So, but, but people don't understand this. You gotta pray. God's gotta open your eyes. They've been hearing it on the liberal news media all day long. So, pray to God to deal with these wealthy, rich people. Isn't that right? Pray, pray to God to put the fear of God. Some of you wonder, how can they wanna kill a baby right before it comes out the womb? Or as the baby drops, and the baby comes in the arms of the nurse, the doctors come and say, do you want it? You want to abort it? You want to kill the, the child? They're trying to pass bills like this. It's crazy, isn't it? So, Pastor, how do we get this now where, 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 where people are trying to pass these things? Money? They're funding them. They're funding them. They're bringing money to fund these things. The wealthy, the billionaires. The billionaires. For example, uh, there was one that's going to get 5000 to the Planned Parenthood and uh, they're going to, 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 to go ahead and abort a baby, but they're going to 5000 on, on a credit card, 5000 said it's documented. They called him up and said it's got to be a black girl, a black teenage girl, and a black baby because we believe that black people is the destruction of America. He said that they receive it, they gladly receive the 5000 they help some black teenage girl. All these babies they said they're making. Well, it's the rich. It's the rich. Pray to God to deal with them. I know some of you shaking your head and saying, how in the world is Biden lasting? How is he surviving? Some of you shaking your head. If you knew the billion dollars that man's getting, and it's not him running it, he's, got, he's a puppet. It's those crazy people telling him what to do. Pray to God to deal with the rich. Tell them to get right with God. They'll be tired. They'll be giving, help us in a good church. Help missionaries. Isn't that right? And if it went... If we ever get rich one day, may we never forget God. Amen. Isn't that right? May we never forget Him. Amen. Give to the ministry. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Yes. We'll go try to buy private jets and all that kind of stuff. Jets. <laughs> Airplanes. <laughs> A match is so big you get lost in it. What you gonna do with the thing? <laughs> Come on. Come on, somebody say that. About five Bentleys. No way, no way, no Jose. Whatever. You know about four Bentleys or whatever. You know what? We don't do it all them things. You know what? You know, verse 7, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. See that there? For the redemption of their soul is what? Precious. See his brother. That he should live forever and see corruption. Oh, friend, the only way you're going to live up forever is not all the money you got. It's only through Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. You know, we call it soul winning. Isn't that right? Amen. What, does it, what does the prophet buy in the game? The whole world loses on what? So, a soul is precious, friend. It will go on for eternity. Amen. Matthew 10, 28 says, Don't fear a man to destroy your body, but rather fear God that can destroy both body and soul in hell. Soul goes on forever, friend. It leaves the body. Souls. Amen. One day, thank God we're going to get a glorified body in heaven. We don't understand everything about heaven. But we do know we're going to get another body, 1 Corinthians 15. We do as know it's going to be a wonderful body. Isn't that right? No sickness, no pain, no sorrow. Isn't that right, friends? No more. Isn't that right? We might live to be 80, 
our body starts getting frail and shutting down like Brother, Brother Kenneth here. He's in the front seat. He's asleep. He's asleep. Up in his 80s. But thank God he's in the house of God. It's hard for him to get around, but he wants to get on the van. It's hard for him to get around, but he calls us to pick him up. Come get us, please. Come get me. On Sunday night, come get me. On a Wednesday, come get me, preacher. Sunday morning, come get us. And we get him. We get him. And he's kind to you. And he's in the house of God. And he can't, he can't read. He tells you he can't read. I'll tell you what. He'll get a glorified body. We'll get a glorified body. I hope we can be in the house of God his age. I hope we can be in the house of God. 80. Isn't that right? I hope we can be here singing songs of God. Might be tired, fall asleep. Thank God is in the house of God. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God for it. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord for him. Thank God for him. We were out soul. We met him, didn't we? We were out soul that Thursday night. It's one soul. In your class, one soul. One soul. Those little babies in the classroom. Those little toddlers. Juniors, teenagers, those souls are precious. All the money in the world can't buy them. Only Jesus can save them. All the Christ's blood can save them. The mother of all the money in the world, the grandparents, all the money in the world can't get them saved, friend. We're knocking on doors, going to in the middle of the night. Sometimes we're tired, sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we don't want to go. But thank God we obey God. Thank God we warn them. Thank God we're trying to get them saved from hell. Thank God we want them in heaven. Thank God we, 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 can, we can say, Jesus, you died for them. You shed your blood for them. And we're going to go soul winning. Let me say soul winning. We want their souls to be saved. Red, yellow, black, or white, they're all precious in our soul. Amen? That's why we don't go skin when we go soul winning. They're precious. Precious souls. We want them to live forever. Verse 9. We don't want to see corruption. We don't want to see them go to hell. Hey, friend, we're coming up from the grave. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to come up Amen. from that grave. But verse 10. For he seeth that wise men will die. Look at Psalm 29, verse 10. Look at verse 10. For he seeth that wise men die. Likewise, the fool and the what? Brutus person perish and leave their wealth to what? Friend, don't matter. Somebody's going to get that. We're all going to be gone. Who going to get it? Who going to get it, friend? Friend, who going to get it? In some cases, family be fighting over it. And after they fight over it, somebody to the neighbor, somebody gonna get it. Can't take it with us. You say, I'm gonna give you all, I'm going to heaven, I'm giving you all, take it all with me. And never see that happen. Never see that happen. <laughs> Let's concentrate on serving the Lord. Because all of what we do for Jesus is gonna last forever, isn't that right? Look what the Bible says here, friend, verse, 30, uh, verse 11. Their inward thought is that their what? Their houses shall continue up forever, and their dwelling places to what? All those that call, they call their lands, they call their lands after their own name. We're still doing it. <laughs> George Washington has gone a long time. He got their house for the rest of them. Come on, somebody say that. Benjamin Franklin. Whatever, Martin Luther King, whatever. Hey, for what we do for God is going to last forever. Amen. Hello. Amen. But I'll tell you, sometimes the way we get, we get so caught up in things in life, we think we're going to have it forever, don't we? No. What I'm trying to say, friend, God gives us things, but he never wants us to worship things. He wants us to worship him. Look at my house. Look at my home. Oh, man, thank God for the home. Thank God for the home. But take time out to do something for Jesus. Take some, give some money to God. Don't live for yourself. Look at my car. Well, friend, well, friend, thank God for the car. I mean, God wants us to have things. But some people worship it. I, that's why I mentioned I sold my car, went to Bible college, and paid my way, and went on foot. And that's why I brought up me and my wife got married. We didn't have a car. I'm not saying you wrong to have a car. I'm just saying, I, I use the illustration to tell you, I was so in love with the Lord Jesus. I love my sweetheart. 
We serve God together. God gave us a car. God took care of all that. He has more, car, more cars than I can imagine in life. I can't count all the cars I have. Can't count them all. Lost track. God take care of you. And you know what? And uh, who comfort these precious ones? So I'm scared to death. I am. Um, I get you get a chuckle out of what say the person they I just play trying to get the person to get with it. You know, they they work and work and work and work. <laughs> they work and work and work. Oh, they just pet it. They pet it. <laughs> Some people pet it. They don't have they still have faith. You know, the Bible says you have faith, gotta open the doors. You know, you, 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 the, the devil play on you when he sees you petrified. So I told him about brother I told him about our badges. I told him brother Jamie walked away from the NBA. He walked away from it and and, and, and I tell you, he could, he could be making millions, you know? And, but he wanted to serve God. He's a preacher now. And that person, is, and, and, you know, this is this way they think. And, and just pray for the person. The person says, uh, well, maybe, maybe for, he should have played about three years to save some money. <laughs> he said, maybe, maybe for all those millions. <laughs> and then the preacher, and then come to church. <laughs> Brother, it don't work that way. <laughs> Brother, well, God wants you to do something. You do it for him. God will bless you with your future, friend. <laughs> and that person's going through so much. So much in their family. And so much with their wife. So much with all that the person's going through. And so much hurt. So much depression. But they just pray that people just get it. And, I, and on the serious side, we chuckle. Let's pray I don't get a phone call that he had a heart attack. And he's gone. And we have loved ones. We all have loved ones in this room. They're alive. God, don't let them die like that. Please, Lord. Would you pray if you care about each other? Pray for my loved ones. Pray for your loved ones. We got something out serving God. And friend, if they die tonight, our hearts would be so broken. They're not serving the Lord. Some of them might have been tithing, not even giving a 10%. Okay. I mean, there's no soul with them, there's no bus work, there's nothing. Not cleaning them. Cleaning, decorating, not zero. Not praying, not reading their Bibles. They put all their investment in their money and in their, in their job. Man, Jesus will lay up treasures to heaven. Amen. Amen. Teenagers, would you look at me, young kids? Would you look at me? Listen, listen, listen. So many of them start off young. And when they get older, they don't serve God. Don't be that way. Serve the Lord all the days of your life. Take time out for God. It was on Twitter. And the daddy was on the Twitter, and I, bl I believe he's a preacher. It's heartbreaking. Let me hear you say 16 years old. Died in a car wreck. Teenager, would you look at me? Teenager, would you look at me? Look up here. May God help you. Serve the Lord. Serve God. You never know what could happen. Let's pray for each other. Amen? Let's pray. Father, there's a praying people here tonight. There's a praying people here tonight. A praying people. I know we got some people that pray. It's prayer meeting time. Come on. Find your spot at the altar. If you're not going to pray at the altar, pray right where you're in your seat. But pray. We have a praying people. Let's don't be selfish. Pray for my children. Pray for your children. Pray for the church children. Pray. Pray, would you? Would you pray that God...